Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. It's gonna be another raid Shadow Legends video. So we have got another another set of madness going on. Um Playroom have not had enough of our money yet. So we have got a times ten summoning event on tomorrow. It's gonna to come in conjunction with the summon rush, which has just popped up. So two summon rushes within three days. Pretty mental. Um yesterday I was talking about how to do it as a free to play. Uh, not free to play, sorry, how to do it without without using your big shards. Today, we're going to be looking at, do we want to use shards for this type of summon event? So, it's another one of these, oh, I want another one of these uh, times 10 on a bunch of champions. Um, I actually love the idea of it. I just feel like they're doing them too often. Um, that's just me. Maybe, maybe people have been saving their shards and this is exactly what they want. So, we have got times 10 on 10 champions starting tomorrow let me go through who's going to be involved in the mix and i tell you what again there's some really really good champs in this let's start here then so there's going to be five epics five legendaries we have got uh, and, and what this is going to be is uh, let me just make sure i get this clear it is not a times 10 chance to pull an epic or a legendary what it means is if you summon the summoning rates are the same 8% chance to get an epic, half a percent chance to get a legendary on this. Or if you're doing sacred, 94. If you're doing void, 8.5. All of these stay the same. Nothing changes here. It's not times 10 chance to pull one of these champions. What it is, is if you pull an epic, it's times 10 chance to get one of these, these epics. And if you pull a legendary, it's times 10 chance that you're going to get one of these legendaries. So if you think about, you know, there's a whole pool of what, 80 or so legendaries. If you pick one out, well, there's actually going to be 10 copies of each of these legendaries in the mix if you try and summon them. So let me go through who they are. You can then make some decisions. There's tons of offers at the minute, by the way, guys. Look at this. Um, they're really wanting our cash at the minute. So if you pull shards tomorrow, when that summon rush pops, this is who you've got a chance of. So we have got Raw Guard, arguably the best dungeon epic in the game. Definitely for speedruns. He's up there. Go to any high-end team. He's probably in it. Um, he's better when you get late game rather than early game, but he's still solid. He's solid right the way through the game. Got to be up there as one of my top 10 uh, epics in the whole game, like, completely. Um, really cool champ. Decreased defense on his A1, um, which is probably not really the reason you pick him, but still, it's decent. Attacks all enemies and hits with max HP. This is why it becomes so good late game because ev the way they scale the dungeons is they scale them by pushing their HP levels up really high. So all of the mob groups start to get hit by a ton. The, the bosses get absolutely nuked. I do 2 million a hit against a spider with this move. Um, very cool champion. And then he's got a decreased speed and turn meter on his A3, which is also really, really good. Um, does have an aura for dungeons as well, 35% attack, which only buffs your base, but still very good. It doesn't actually have the best base stats. Good base attack, very bad base speed, bad base HP, very bad base defense. He's difficult to keep alive, actually. But once you've got him in the right team, he absolutely nukes waves. Very good champion. Um, already, if you don't have him, he's already a good reason to do this if you want to take the um, the gamble. Next one is Tyrell. Tyrell, another insane epic. Top three epics in the whole game. Can use him literally anywhere in the game. Look at these reviews. And they're not wrong either. They, he can be used anywhere in the game. He's got the decreased attack on his A1, so he's great for clan boss. Good percentage to hit it as well. Doesn't actually need books, because he's already got 40% here, but benefits from books. AoE decreased defense on his A2. Makes him relevant for any dungeon, um, arena, <laughs> faction wars, all you know everything. And then he's got a turn meter reduction on his A3, which means he's insane for spider. Uh, he also brings the stun for a single target, not against bosses. So all in all, his kit is insane. And then he's got an increased defense aura for all battles by 25%, which is big as well. Very good base stats, good base defense. All of his damage is based on defense, which means you can get him to hit hard and stay alive. One of the, the few epics that can get involved in Nightmare Campaign pretty comfortably. 
So Tayrail in the mix means it's going to be a big summon session. Uh, who else have we got then? Battle Sage. This one? Yeah, Battle Sage. Not my favourite to be honest. AoE on Array 1. Pretty good if you want to get some, some sort of control in waves with stun sets. Um, I guess it makes her viable for campaign farm. She's got... Uh, she's a support to champ though. She's not going to hit that hard. Removes all debuffs on all allies. Pretty cool. Then places increased attack on all allies. This buff cannot be removed. That's interesting. I've never read that before actually. This buff cannot be removed. Increased attack. That's actually pretty cool. I quite like that. Um, and then got revive on death. This is not the best. Um, so revive on death for three turns. That's long. I guess if you're going to do one of those kind of Phoenix style comps, not bad. Um, I find with revive on death, you have to be down so fast to make it work because you, you die, you pop back up with a, a small amount of health and pretty much normally you just die again. So I'm not a big fan of this. Um, speed in all battles over by 19%. Very good base stats. Good HP level, pretty good defense, very good speed. So solid champion, although I'm not a massive fan. Uh, if I pulled her out of the three I've said so far, I wouldn't be happy. Exemplar, Exemplar, is that this one? Yeah. So Exemplar, don't know that much about this one. Attacks one enemy two times, place extra hit if it's a crit. Okay. Attacks three times, weaken. Feels like a Fire Knight champ, actually. Attacks one enemy, 75% chance. You can book it up to 100 to freeze them and block cooldowns. It's okay. Again, for a, net, for a Void, I feel like this is pretty poor. Not very good base stats. Uh, I wouldn't be that fussed about taking her at all. Um, and then we've got Thanassal as well. So Thanassal, good support champion. Will help you through things like spiders. Will help you through... Uh, can actually act as a bit of a healer for clan boss. Very good for your faction war team. Um, got sleep on his A1. It's kind of like a so what really. Sleep's not a great um, debuff. Increased defense on all allies and heals all allies. This is his main skill. Heals all allies by 25%, plus you get a bit of bonus here. Um, but the increased defense is a good one. Book down to three turns is pretty cool. Attacks all enemies on his A3. De decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by a turn. That's pretty cool as well. So not a bad champ, but not the best. Very good base stats to keep alive. Fast, very fast actually. So pretty good as a support. Um, Let's get into the legendaries then. So, who have we got? Who have we got? Who have we got? Not these two. No, I think it's the old ones. Pretty much all of the old ones that they had in the game for a while. Lissandra. I've just pulled a Lissandra. She's insanely good. She's insanely good. I don't have mine fully built yet, but there will be a guide coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, pretty unique A1. Not unique, but pretty rare. Uh, attacks one enemy. If she's got a bunch of debuffs on her, she'll transfer all of those debuffs onto the enemy, which is quite cool. Good for dragon, uh, good for spider potentially, good for the arena. This is really good. She's then got an A2, which fully depletes turn meter. Any sort of turn meter control, free turn cooldown is good, and this hits pretty hard. And then she's got an A3, which is what she's best known for, I guess. Increased speed on all allies, fills their turn meter, and decreases the term meter of all enemies. Very cool. Uh, and then she's got a speed in all battles by 24%, which is quite high actually. So very, very high base speed, very high base HP, uh, good base defense, very solid support, great champion. We then got Royal, Gu uh, Royal Huntsman. Um, I'd say very much like a mid-tier legendary. It's got an insane A3. Will ignore defense, 100% defense, and this nukes. This will hit for over 100k if you got it got geared right. So it can easily one shot someone like a Tormen, someone any any sort of tank really can one shot a tank down to the ground, no problems. Um, also got an AOE decreased defense. So only got a um, no sorry. If it's a crit, it places it on all enemies, which is cool. So you get full decreased defense if it's crit, unless you get any weak hits. This is cool. And the A1, you know what, it does a bit of damage. Um, it's not bad. The worst thing about him is he's hard to keep alive, but he's actually pretty fast, good base stats. If you don't have that decreased defense champion, he's pretty solid for you. And as I say, in something like a Faction Wars, he will nuke one enemy down pretty consistently with this. So not bad. Um, we've then got ourselves Ethos. I've just got an Ethos. I'm leveling to 60 right now. He is solid. Very good Rotus killer. So he's got uh, A1. He's all about damage. He doesn't have any utility. It's just damage. 
20% chance of getting an extra turn. Uh, decreases enemies' max HP by 15%. That's a bit of a so what. Um, it does have this weaken, but it's the, it's the weak version. I've got no idea why I've got them with a weak version of it on. Absolutely stupid. But attacks three times. All enemies three times. This can kill Rotus in one shot if you get him going fast enough. Um, pretty cool. And it hits really hard as well. And then he's got an AoE on his A3 as well, which attacks so it attacks all enemies and is always critical. So you could build it with no more crit, just crit damage. This will always be a crit. That's quite interesting to me. <laughs> I'm keen to try this out and forget this. It's a shame Rotus is so keen in the meta because I would love to try this out when I build mine up. But good champion, good base stats, very hard to keep alive again. Terrible base defense. Um, we do also have a Belenar, so another Void here. I've had very little exposure to this guy. Some people tell me he's decent. Um, increases crit rate for all allies if he does a crit on his A1. Quite interesting. Places decreased defense and weaken debuff for two turns on one enemy, then attacks them. Places increased defense buff on this champion for two turns if this account uh, attack kills an enemy. This is quite interesting. You can get your double debuff down on the main spider. You get double debuffs down on the clan boss. Um, but you don't do this often on, on the bosses, obviously, the increased defense part. But this is actually pretty good ability here. Uh, then got an A3, attacks one enemy, will heal this champion equal to any surplus damage if it's killed. Feels like it's a bit of an arena champion with these kind of, if something's killed, something will happen. Or maybe dungeon or faction wars, I guess. But, um, you know, this utility doesn't kick in in any sort of boss fight. This utility doesn't kick in any sort of boss fight. And then he's got this A4, um, attacks one enemy, only when Zabby is on the team. Attacks one enemy, places poison, decrease attack, decrease speed, and decrease accuracy for two turns. Pretty cool, actually, if you've got Xavier, I guess. But um, not, not super relevant, because I, I guess most people don't have those comboed. Uh, crit rate in all battles is, is a bit meh. He's okay. He's like mid-tier mid -tier legendary. Good base stats across the board. Um, if I pulled him, I probably wouldn't be too in too much of a rush to build him. I don't have a Xavier, and I'm not that keen on the kit. It's okay. Lastly, then, we've got Arbiter. So everyone can, can get Arbiter through the missions. They're hard. Um, when I do my account takeovers, the majority of them are people saying, can you help me through the final stages? Um, very good base sets. Arbiter's a, a goddess. She is fantastic in the game. Really solid. Weaken on her A1. Reduce uh, duration of buffs on enemy buffs on array 2, AoE. Fill turn meter and heal on array 3. On a free turn cooldown if you book it. Very good. This ability is insane. Uh, and then revive all dead allies to 35% HP. Then fills all turn meters by 20% and, um, and gets an extra turn. <laughs> insane. Insane. Um, so all in all, her kit's insane. One of the best speed auras in the game. Not quite, but not far off it. Crazy base speed, good base HP, not bad base defense. You can build her as a tank, uh, a fast tank. She's excellent. So I guess they've done it again. They've given us decisions to make. I am fortunate to have the champions that I want from this, this summon event. I don't want Belenar. Everyone else I've got, actually. So I'm not going to be pulling any shards, but... If I was sitting here as a kind of mid-game player and I don't have a decreased attack champion yet, Tayrell would be pretty uh, pretty relevant to me. If I wanted someone to, to help speed up my dungeon runs, Raw Guard would be much more relevant to me. The good thing, I, I guess the good thing about pulling shards for this one, if you're going to, is that the epics are actually very good in this faction. So even if you don't pull those top tier legendaries, if you get a couple of those epics, you're probably quite happy with that. So, I don't know, guys. Comment below. They've done it again. Do you want to get involved or not? Up in Hell Hades. I'll catch you soon.